Hello, Brian Lynch here. It's December 17th, 2011. I'm uh, out at the orchard, and uh, as you can see off in the distance, uh, the Wabash River has uh, once again flooded uh, my neighbor's field. Uh, nobody's out here cutting, so uh, I'd like to talk about uh, my experiences so far with uh, having people come out and uh, hunt deer. As uh, part of my uh, plan to uh, reduce the amount of deer damage, uh, that uh, is inflicted upon my fruit trees, I've uh, tried to have people come out here and hunt. Now in Indiana, at least the part of Indiana I'm in, bow hunting season uh, extends from September 15th to the uh, first of the year. So it's a really long time. And uh, I didn't know any bow hunters in the area, so uh, first thing I attempted was to try and have people... Uh, I set up a scheduling uh, software and was going to have people sign up for times, and I uh, really hoped to have uh, a lot of people out here, but uh, that didn't work. And I, uh, I posted a video earlier about that. So my next plan was to have a, uh, allow one group of people almost unlimited rights to uh, hunt on this land. Uh, but uh, the only real uh, requirement was I wanted them to hunt a lot. Uh, you know, I didn't care if you know, I got any share of the meat or anything like that, I just wanted uh, my trees protected. So I ended up going with a group of uh, three guys uh, that uh, essentially, it sounded like they were going to be able to hunt uh, pretty much uh, constantly, have at least one person out here per day for the majority of hunting season, which is a, a pretty long time. So it was a pretty sizable commitment was what I was looking for. And uh, the first day, uh, or the, uh, the second day I should say, after they, uh, I, I talked to them, I, I drove up to my property and uh, you know, they were here and they were uh, doing their thing and that was great. They saw a couple deer. Uh, they weren't able to take any shots at them because they were too far away, but uh, you know, I was pretty happy that they were out here. And uh, that's the last I saw of them, but I didn't think too much of that because uh, they were probably hunting during the week and you know, I wasn't out here at all during the week, so I, I thought nothing of it and just figured everything was going well. Uh, but uh, towards the end of firearm seasons, when I told them they had to stop, they, uh, I sent them an email thanking them for their uh, help and, you know, just asking how many deer they had been able to take off the land. And uh, even though they had responded promptly when I was trying to get them out here uh, back in September, uh, they completely ignored my email. But, you know, I figured, eh, that's, you know, maybe they were busy. So uh, after uh, firearm season started, I once again contacted these, uh, it was these three people about uh, how they have managed... Uh, in deer season uh, if they were able to take any uh, deer off the property. And once again, they ignored me. So I was kind of left with the impression that uh, they probably hunted the property a couple times, they got probably a better offer, a better piece of land, and uh, they didn't have the common courtesy to let me know so that I could let somebody else who really wanted to hunt the land come onto the land and hunt it for me. Uh, yeah, so my uh, opinion of bow hunters right now is uh, pretty low. So, bow hunting season was pretty much a bust. So, uh, for firearm season, which uh, starts uh, in mid-November, I had a, a friend of mine come out here and uh, hunt the property. The first week, he, uh, he saw a group of three deer, and he was able to take one of the deer out. He only had one permit on him, uh, and he saw three deer, so he was only ta able to take out uh, one of the three deer. Uh, but that weekend, he was up in this tree right here, and uh, once again, the, uh, the two deer of the uh, original three came back to the property and I uh, was able to take both of them out and uh, although one of them stayed on the property after it had been shot uh, there was another one that ran over this way and uh, he was set up my friend was set up pretty close to my neighbor's property you can see there's a uh, yellow marker over there uh, along with a little bit of orange paint that sort of marks uh, the property boundary and uh, so the deer ran over into uh, my neighbor's property, which, uh, you know, that happens. But as he was going, walking uh, past this yellow marker on that particular day, uh, he noticed that uh, there were two uh, field-dressed deer uh, that had bags of ice in them. Obviously poached deer, they had no tags on them, which uh, presents quite the problem because even though he had the tags for the two deer that he had legally shot, he didn't have any tags for the, uh, the poached deer that he found. So uh, luckily he knows somebody who knows somebody who is the con one of the conservation officers 
in uh, the area I am in, and uh, he basically got this friend of a friend to vouch for him, and uh, the conservation officer came out here and uh, ended up giving him uh, two, I think it was uh, technically roadkill tags, although these uh, were obviously not roadkill deer. Uh, on that particular day, he ended up getting four deer. Uh, so, in hindsight, it turns out that uh, even though firearm season was a bust, uh, I was able to get, uh, you know, the, uh, the total number of deer in this area was uh, reduced by poachers uh, much more effectively than uh, legal bow hunters on my land. So I'm not sure how to encourage it in the future, but uh, yeah, poachers on my land uh, did a far better job of uh, controlling the deer population than any bow hunter.